Welcome to the e-learning platform by Science Park. So today we are going to cover second part of motions of the earth from standard 5. So let's see what are we going to cover in this video. Firstly, we are going to see what are the effects of rotation of earth. Then we are going to understand another motion of earth that is revolution and finally the effects of revolution of earth. Now as we know the axis of rotation of earth is tilted by 23.5 degrees and it is with respect to the sun, the position of sun. Hmm. Now let's see some effects due to rotation of earth. So now we are going to look at some effects due to the earth's rotation. As we know friends that earth rotates in anti-clockwise direction. Hmm. Now what are the effects? The first and the foremost effect is day and night. Yes. So now let us see how we can understand day and night with the help of this globe and a torch. Now this torch acts as a light source exactly like how sun acts as a light source. Now here is the sun or the torch and I switch it on. Now you can see the light from the sun falls exactly on half of this globe. So the portion where the light is falling is called as day and the portion where the light doesn't falls is called as night. So in that portion everywhere there is night and in this portion everywhere it is day. Now if I rotate this globe anti-clockwise you will slowly see that the regions which are coming under the light are different. Yes. So like for example it is night in India and slowly slowly it is coming under the light of from the torch. So it is day. And now it is going under the other half portion so there is night. So friends we also say that sun rises from east. So what exactly does it? Does the sun moves around the earth or it is the effect of earth's rotation? Yes, it is the effect of earth's rotation. Let's see how. Now here is the light from sun falling on the earth. And as you know that earth rotates anti-clockwise. So it feels like the sun rises from east. So my dear friends, it feels like the sun is rising from east. Actually, it is an effect of earth's rotation. And as it rotates anti-clockwise, sun rises from east and it sets in west. All right. Now friends, we will understand in detail the revolution of earth. As we can see, the axis is not particularly facing sun or away from sun, but it is pointing in one specific direction only, such that at one point, at this point, the axis is facing towards the sun and when it comes at the opposite end of orbit, it is facing away from it. Right. So now before understanding the effects due to revolution, let us see this clip and after that the effects due to revolution. Now friends, as we know that earth also revolves around the sun and that too in anti-clockwise direction. So there are a few effects due to the revolution as well. But before that, we are going to know some things. Now this globe or our earth 
is divided into two portions called as hemispheres. This is a sphere and this is divided into half and that half portion is called as hemisphere. Now here is the line in between the earth which divides our earth into two hemispheres. The portion which is above is called as northern hemisphere and which is below is called as southern hemisphere. And here is the axis of the earth. Right? So the axis where it meets the earth are called as poles of the earth. This is called as north pole and below this is called as south pole. And friends, this line which divides our earth into two hemispheres is called as equator. So friends, let's see the four important days of the year in which the position of the earth is such that it is very interesting, right? So the first thing is when the length of the day and night are equal in all parts of the earth or in all parts of the world. So when will such situation come? See here friends, this is the globe. Now this, the north pole is facing towards this wall behind me, right? And the sun is here. So equal amount of light is now falling on northern hemisphere as well as the southern hemisphere. So this day is called as autumn equinox. Now this usually comes between 19th to 21st of March. Now this effect or the length of day and night being equal happens once again in a year. Yes, my dear friend, it happens when earth revolves around the sun and comes to this position where the light from the sun falls equally on northern hemisphere as well as southern hemisphere. So this day is called as spring equinox and it occurs between 21st to 23rd of September. Now friends, we will talk about the longest day and the shortest day of the year. Now you must have known that 21st June is generally the longest day but in northern hemisphere. So when such situation occurs? Friends, now the axis is pointing towards this direction, the direction in which there is sun. Yes, on this day maximum light from the sun falls on northern hemisphere. So on this, on this day, the length of the day is maximum in northern hemisphere. So this day we call it as the longest day of the year. It is also called as summer solstice. And in the same period, on the same day, there is the shortest day in southern hemisphere. Now tell me friends, what must be the position of the earth with respect to sun so that there will be the shortest day on earth or rather on northern hemisphere. Yes. So friend, when the earth revolves and come on the other side where the north pole is facing away from the sun on this day there will be shortest day on northern hemisphere. This day is also called as winter solstice and it generally occurs on 21st of December. Okay friends. So as we have already seen in this video or in the clip before this, that this is the position of earth with respect to sun where it receives equal amount of light in northern as well as in southern hemisphere. Also called as the autumn equinox. It generally occurs between 19th to 21st of March. Now this is another position of earth in an year in which it receives equal amount of light in northern and southern hemisphere. So this is called as spring equinox. 
it occurs between 21st and 23rd september now as we have seen this is the position wherein northern hemisphere receives maximum amount of light hence the length of the day in northern hemisphere is the largest similarly this is the position wherein southern hemisphere receives maximum amount of light hence the length of the day here is maximum and the length of the day in northern hemisphere is minimum also called as winter solstice and it occurs between 20 to 23rd of december now friends we will have a look at different seasons now these occur due to the revolution of earth right as you know as we have also seen that in a specific period of year northern hemisphere receives more light than southern hemisphere hence due to this there are some effects in the climate also and we call it as season so this is these seasons are in accordance with the hindu months right so this is vasant ritu or in english we say it as spring season next is grishma ritu or summer then comes varsha ritu or monsoon the rainy season and this is sharad ritu or autumn then we have hemant ritu or pre winter and finally we have shishir ritu or winter season now these are some seasons uh, of different states in india similarly this are also some of the seasons right so friends let's summarize what we have learnt in this video so first we have seen the effects of rotation of earth that is the day and night then we have seen that earth also revolves around the sun while rotating around itself we have seen some of the things like hemisphere the equator poles of earth then we have seen equinoxes and solstices wherein the length of the day and night changes or it is same in northern and southern hemispheres of earth then we have seen different seasons in india according to the indian calendar right so here are some questions so you, you can pause the video here note these questions down write the answers to them you know, and you can send the answers via email or you can write them in the comments below thank you